today I'm going to show you the whole process of painting this painting, um, which I've, I've just drawn up using the charcoal. Um, and I will begin mixing some paint in a moment. Um, so I've, I've, it's, a, it's an image from this photo, which um, is a photo of mine taken in the city in Auckland a few years ago. There's some major, major construction going on there in the city and um, it was very disrupted. <coughs> um, so lots of people walking around in, in very different, unusual sort of pedestrian patterns. Uh, you know, the road was blocked off. So this is the photo printed. Um, I printed it on um, ordinary paper first. And um, it hasn't got a lot of depth in the darks um, in that one. This, this one is printed on photo paper. So I've just played around with that printing a little bit to try and get it better. This photo paper is much better, it's glossy. Um, so the values are better. But it's, it's the, you can see that the colours are very different in the two. And the colour I really want is somewhere in between. All right, I've got some linseed oil, I think, in there, looks like. Okay, I'm not going to use that. That's a drying medium. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of underpainting, I think. Um, so I'm going to just use um, burnt sienna um, underpainting. So um, first of all, I'm just going to get rid of that some of that charcoal on on the board um, because you know I don't want my paint mixing too much with that charcoal. So I'm just going to whack that. And um, it so uh, just leaves a bit of paint on that. Just leaves a bit of a an imprint of the charcoal. Um, shadows here got some nice um, soft edges. Some of them are harder edges. Um, so I'm just going to block in some of those. Um, with a fairly dilute. Um, now the board is already sort of mid-gray. So I've, this is, this is a, um, a gesso, well an acrylic, not real gesso, but an acrylic um, gesso. Um, but it's, you can see the tonal difference, the, the burnt sienna is quite a bit darker than that. So I'm just going to block in some of those areas fairly. Fairly quickly. If I want to um, have a sort of mid, a lighter Uh, lighter areas, this is sort of mid tone here. So it's quite a warm, you can see straight away, it's, it's quite a warm um, hue. Um, so the, dark, the darker areas, they're just going to be um, undiluted almost undiluted paint. This brush is not exactly sticking together because the paint's a bit too dilute for it to, to um, seal up the brush to stop it opening up. So the other thing you can do if, if there's a 
area which I want to be a bit lighter. So I'll grab this rag here. I can just go in and um, wipe some of it off and that'll lighten up the lighter areas. up um, probably some of these darks so I'm going to mix up a chromatic black I'm not going to use black out of the tube I've got ivory black there but I'm not going to use that um, so I think I'll need some warm warmish brown burnt umber and some probably ultramarine blue a little not too much of the blue for the, for this uh, for these dark shadows so I'm gonna grab some leather and crimson this one is not, yeah, well, it's permanence is B, series two, so should be okay, but some alizarin crimsons are not very permanent. Um, so I use this palette knife always to mix up my paint and I take very little of that blue and a bit more of the uh, red and the brown, crimson and burnt umber. Now this is for the very darkest black, so I'm going to put a little bit more, I'm going to separate that off a little, put a little bit more of that blue in there for the very darkest areas, and then move that over here. So I'm just going to compare that with what I have on my screen and on my prints which are over there just adjust the camera a bit
So this is painting straight over the, the burnt sienna underpainting. So it will mix a bit with it because um, it's not dry. I haven't let it dry. Um, it's so I'm, I'm just I'm not going to play around with it too much in the sense of mixing it on the on the board. This brush is sort of opening up a bit. It's got, it's not ideal. Um, you can get more paint into it. Try and get it to close up a bit, but it's a bit a bit old. That's a pity. That was my favourite brush until today. shadows, blacks, um, to some of these really bright um, areas. So that helps me to um, just get a sort of an overview of the full tonal range um, that's going to be in the painting. Because until you get those in, um, it's hard to see how the other, all the other tonal um, values fit into the painting and whether those values are, are as you want them. Coming off the seam, coming off the top. 
cut there. Just getting the shape around the head, around the skull there. And then over to this side, which is shape of that cat a little bit. Alright. Back to the next bit down.
this painting for now. I've worked on it, it a little bit the following day, um, brightened up this background a bit, and um, just worked a bit on the highlight there, the yellow highlight of the, the reflection from the yellow strip. And I've worked a little bit up here um, and on the figure a tiny bit, but I'm going to leave it for now. I don't want to keep working too much. I'm just going to let it sit there and um, for a few days at least and see if there's anything else that I want to do after that. Um, so yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching and see you next time.